Okay, very good. Well, um, thanks again to John and, and in particular, John and Allison Baker, I wanna thank them because they have done a lot of work on the algorithms I'll talk about. In particular, um, John um, and Allison did quite pioneering work into GM res and block GM res algorithms uh, back for John's thesis. Well, it's great to be back again talking about iterative solvers. It seems like it's a, a theme in my life, but uh, it's uh, quite important in, from the perspective of uh, weather and climate modeling uh, and fluid computational fluid mechanics in general and much more broadly, GM res is, is one of the most widely used iterative solvers in the world. And uh, we might ask, well, uh, what more can be said? And it turns out quite a lot. And in particular, a very hot topic these days is um, mixed precision. How do we exploit um, single or even tensor core half precision on NVIDIA GPUs? So um, that's the focus of my talk. And uh, I want to introduce my team of collaborators, the sort of the dream team of mathematicians working in uh, iterative solvers, in particular, Erin Carson, who's a professor at Charles University in Prague. Um, she has done pioneering work in the analysis of so-called pipelined and S-step Krylov methods and their error analysis. And uh, working with her is Catherine Lund, who's a um, postdoctoral fellow. And she's a student of Daniel Shield in, uh, at Temple. Uh, and everyone, uh, well, over the past three years, you've uh, come to know Cassia Soryadovich, who um, was a postdoctoral fellow at uh, uh, NREL and has now taken a post at Pacific Northwest uh, National Labs. So I want to uh, congratulate Cassia, uh, and she has moved on, um, but we're still working together. And then Margaret Arthur, who's local to Boulder, um, who's been working on AI um, as an intern and uh, was a Boulder High School student. And she won the Colorado State uh, Science Fair this past year um, for working in AI. So um, pleasure to introduce her to you all. Um, all right, well, let me, let me jump right in and say, well, the, the main point of this talk is to, well, it's both a mathematics talk and a computer science talk because the notion of doing mi mixed precision in iterative solvers is relatively new and Aaron has done a lot of work on conjugate gradients. And there's only one paper that's been published in the literature, um, and I'll, I have it on the next page, um, on mixed precision uh, GM res for non-symmetric problems. Uh, there is a, uh, a large review paper by Hartwig Ants et al. So the um, Department of Energy Exascale Mathematics teams or Mathematics Libraries teams have published a paper in International Journal of High Performance Computing, and that, or that's in review, it should be up shortly. So I wanna point that out to everyone. We wanted to put out there a um, broad overview of numerical linear algebra and mixed precision uh, algorithms. And the question is, can we, can we exploit in particular uh, tensor cores, but also uh, half, per, which is half precision 16 bit, and then uh, the results all show that Cassia, in particular, has worked very hard to get are in FP32 uh, mixed with FP64. And at the end of the talk, I'll also, uh, we've done more work on double precision uh, alone GM res, uh, following on from my talk last year. And Environment Canada has implemented this in the GEM production model. So I'd like to show everyone uh, how that improves scaling for the global non-hydrostatic GEM in, in Montreal. And then uh, in particular, compare that with a direct solver, um, FFT based. Okay. So what I'll talk about really is a theorem. It's an extension of uh, some work my PhD advisor did with the team in Prague. Uh, in the early 2000s, and uh, we're going to actually prove a lemma or prove a corollary to their main results. And that allows us to build a mixed precision GM res that has uh, thresholds avoided, or we, we don't have conditionals built into the algorithms. So if you look at a recent paper by Greton et al. 
uh, they have mixed precision, but they, it, their algorithms or their approach necessitate conditionals. So we avoid that by using what I'll refer to as forward backward recurrences. And this matrix T that I've defined here, uh, if you take anything away from the talk, if you really don't um, want to get into the details of the proof I'll present, uh, the key idea is that a certain matrix appears in GMRES or in actually an orthogonalization algorithms. We call it a correction, a triangular correction matrix. In order to do the mixed precision, we need that, we need actually um, both I minus L and I minus L transpose, and those represent forward and backward recurrences. And, and I'll show results and, and what exactly that means. Um, and as I mentioned, Kasha has implemented what she presented two years ago, she's implemented mass in her products, uh, basically a D gem or a mixed, uh, now single precision gem matrix vector multiply uh, in single precision. Okay. So what is a Krylov solver? What is GMRES? Well, I'll go fairly quickly through this. Uh, we pr presented this last year as well, and I'm, I'm sure many people are familiar with GMRES. Um, basically, you're constructing a solution uh, using a Krylov subspace, which is a basis for matrix, uh, for polynomials that are based on matrix vector products or powers thereof. Um, and you start with the initial residual and start iterating. And a, a key thing from the point of view of the numerics, and this is what Page, Ros, Losnick, and Strakos, and Krog pointed out, and others, is that actually what's happening is you're constructing the QR factorization of a certain matrix B here. And that matrix is expanding at each step. And th that's key to the theorem I'll prove. And it's also key to understanding how uh, orthogonality of the Krylov vectors is lost and how, um, how GM res actually converges. Okay, well, again, last year we presented the algorithm um, based on what we call inverse compact Y modified Gram Schmidt. And now our new result allows us to simplify this correction matrix down to something very quite simple, namely the identity matrix minus a strictly lower triangular matrix. And in the GMRES theory, that allows us to maintain, if we do that, we can still maintain machine precision times condition number of the B matrix orthogonality of the Krylov vectors, and that's what the mixed precision algorithm also needs to address. So that's what I'll focus on. Um, all right, well, underneath everything is the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization algorithm. That's what GMRES is based on. And if you go back to 1986 and Yosef Saad, uh, the original really a seminal paper where he introduces GMRES, um, it's based on modified Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. So what Kasia and I and Julian Langeau at CU Denver, what we found was that we could reformulate that algorithm in such a way that we don't have to do all the inner products separately at each iteration. And instead we can do a one blast, uh, all inner products needed at this iteration and they go into a certain matrix, namely this L matrix. And that L matrix uh, shows up in the construction of the T correction matrix. And you can see down at the bottom, the Gram-Schmidt projector, or just the general form of a projector with that T matrix. And the T matrix can be thought of as an approximation of uh, Q transpose Q inverse. Uh, the Qs, or alternatively the V matrix you'll see in the proof, uh, consist of the Krylov vectors, that it, but it, they've been orthogonalized. Okay, well, let's get into this theorem. Um, the theorem, is due to Page, Ross, Losnick, and Strakos, so or the, the main result, namely that GM res is backward stable. And it's, it's kind of a landmark paper in that, um, well, we have an iterative algorithm that actually produces backward stable results, namely um, that what we compute in terms of a solution and in terms of the actual factorization of matrices is close to the original 
uh, well, in the case of the matrices, close to the original matrices uh, in floating point arithmetic. Uh, and this goes back to Wilkinson and rounding error analysis over the past 50 years, this notion of uh, are, can you prove that an algorithm is backward stable? So Page, Ross, Osnick, and Strakos did that. And the way they did it was to rely on a, another result of Page, of Bjork and Page, where uh, they exploited the, uh, a, a fact that was known by Sheffield, namely that um, if you apply householder reflectors, house, which is, they're the basic tool in LA pack, they're the basic tool in all the numerical linear algebra that's out there for constructing or uh, QR factorizations, doing orthogonalization. Well, if you apply householder to an augmented matrix, namely one where I take a matrix A and I augment it with a block of zeros and do the QR factorization, well, it turns out to be numerically and theoretically equivalent to doing the Gram-Schmidt or modified Gram-Schmidt factorization at the same time. So in this 06 paper, um, they look at the augmented householder matrix or uh, transformation matrix P. And here I'm using P tilde to denote a matrix that's close to the computed matrix by uh, is properly normalized. So I can, I can say basically that P times P transpose is the identity matrix uh, in floating point. I'm, it's a device to be able to do the analysis, but um, what pops out is, or what's important here is the 2-2 block, um, the I minus V, I minus S, V, transpose block. That is the, is the same projector that Kasia and I uh, presented last year and that we've been working on. And so they, in their proof, uh, basically use that to establish some identities. So you don't have to go into the details of these identities, but the key identity here is at the bottom, the U matrix, and that's the strictly upper triangular part of V transpose V. Why is that important? Well, that represents the loss of orthogonality, how the inner products of the Krylov vectors, actually they grow at a certain rate. And so in order to bound that and understand what's going on in both full precision and mixed precision, um, we need to be able to pull that out and actually bound that quantity. So. That's what they did in the 06 paper, and it's also what we're going to do here. So just a, a quick result to show that, in, indeed, that that projector is the inverse compact Y projector that we present, presented last year. So we didn't know at the time, but if, if you use those identities uh, from page, you can actually show that what appears in that 2-2 block is indeed the modified Gram-Schmidt projector at the bottom. That's all this page is showing, but it's key to actually develop the proofs further and come up with a mixed precision algorithm. Okay, in particular, what are we after? Well, what we're going to show you here, it's a new result, is that the inverse compact Y or the I plus L inverse is actually just, all we need to do is use I minus L. And all the higher order terms in a Newman polynomial uh, are all powers of machine precision times the condition number of the Arnoldi matrix, and they are incredibly small and we don't need to worry about them. And so how do we do that? Well, we take the results from Page and Strakos uh, in 02 and also their paper from 06. And we say, all right, well, we can bound the loss of orthogonality Boom, they, they use the upper triangular matrix. And again, I, I refer, to, refer you all to the 06 paper where these are derived in detail. But we can put bounds on U or equivalently the L matrix. And most importantly, we can put bounds on powers of the Frobenius norm or just the norms of the L matrix. Well, how do we interpret that? As I said, we, if we were just using modified Gram-Schmidt and the QR factorization, we need all the terms. We need all terms in that Newman polynomial. 
But now we realize, hey, wait a second, we only need the I minus L. And for mixed precision, the punchline is we can also do that with backwards and forwards recurrences and just do a simple I minus L, I minus L transpose. So, uh, well, we have a write up too. So if anyone's interested, let me know all of the, the details of the proof and more, uh, more along these lines, we have a preprint that we're putting together. But at the end of the day, this is what GM res now looks like. So even beyond what we had last year, we have a one sync, we have a mass inner product here, which is a global reduction. That's where a lot of time is spent. It's a matrix vector product. But now we remove the inverse that was down in step 13. And we just have an I minus L, which is a very small matrix. And it's just a, it's a upper triangular matrix. Uh, so in the end, all we need is a matrix vector product. Very efficient on a GPU and a very small kernel to implement. Okay, and then in the mixed precision result, what do we do? Well, in mixed precision, we compute the matrix vector product here, all in single precision. No thresholds, no thread divergence. And then we use that, and this uh, step 13 is a double precision uh, result. Okay, well, I don't wanna spend too much more time on that, but that we needed to get into some theory, in other words, to really drill down and say, all right, what does a mixed precision GM res look like? And we've also had to modify the original GM res, or at least the one we presented last year. Okay, well, Cash's result from two years ago, she showed that you can, in that uh, matrix vector product, uh, if you have enough vectors in the Krylov subspace, you can approach upwards of 400 gigaflops on the Volta V100. And that's certainly uh, her results uh, were able to, uh, well, I don't want to say beat, but they're, they're faster than Kublas, they're uh, faster than the vendor supplied libraries, which, which is quite nice. So we're up, we're up approaching 400 gigaflops and now, as of this weekend, we can, in single precision, do the same thing. And uh, Cash is running this at close to 700 gigaflops. So we're creeping up on a teraflop, which is amazing to me that we could run the orthogonalization in GMRES at a full or close to a full teraflop. So uh, kudos to Cash for, for getting this to go so fast. Uh, the red line is a roof line model, and then um, the square, uh, what Kasher refers to as V12, is doing those actually two matrix vector operations for improved data re reuse. Okay, well, let's, let's look at some numerical results, and then I'll get on to the Environment Canada results, because really that's what, I mean, th this audience in particular, I think you might be interested in how well GMRES in this form be, uh, performs on a on a Cray XC60. Uh, but first I wanna mention that, well, how do we know that this actually converges and converges to double precision residuals? And that, that's the other takeaway from this talk, is that we can compute all the inner products in GM res in single precision at high speed, and yet still achieve double precision uh, accuracy in the computations. In other words, the, uh, well, and I want to focus, what do I mean by that? We mean the normwise relative backwards error. That, that's really the true measure of whether or not GMRES is converged. GMRES converges and stops at the point that hits double precision mach, uh, machine round off, basically. Uh, I talked about this last year as well, but I, one of the issues with using relative residuals as opposed to the normwise relative backward error is that as the red curve shows, this is rather a difficult problem from Ann Greenbaum and um, it's from Greenbaum, Roslosnik and Strakos, uh, the same people that did the backward stability proof, that the relative error can stall early, whereas the normwise relative error, uh, normwise relative backwards error, pardon me, the blue curve hits machine precision. So what happens in a mixed precision 
algorithm. And this is the key. Okay, so the magenta curve is the, what I didn't point out on the other curve, sorry, was the magenta here is the loss of orthogonality. And with modified Gram-Schmidt, the algorithm stalls and stops when the loss of orthogonality metric due to Chris Page, when that hits one. Notice that in the magenta curve hits one, the red curve stalls, and the blue curve hits machine precision. Well, with our mixed precision GM res, the magenta is now the loss of orthogonality, but what, what's different is unlike the black curve here, it stays at single precision, um, in, in a single precision machine epsilon, single precision round off. So by using that uh, forward backward recurrence, we are able to uh, maintain backward stability. We're able to converge and only at the end, only when GM res is done, does the loss of orthogonality hit one and the Krylov vectors of lost linear independence. So that, that's really what those earlier papers and the theorem are about, namely GM res converges at the point that orthogonality is totally lost. And that's what the 06 paper was all about. Okay, so let's move on. I have a couple more minutes. Let's present the Environment Canada results. Um, this is in collaboration with uh, Stefan Goudreau in Montreal, who's the head of the dynamics and numerics team at uh, Recherche en Prévision Numérique, where I used to work. So it's kind of cool to, to collaborate with them. And what we did, or the, their team implemented uh, not the mixed precision yet, although they've asked me if they could please have um, the mixed precision formulation, and they certainly can. I'm glad to pass that along. And to everyone here, if you'd like, uh, we're going to put together a community uh, reference code for, for GPU, so um, people are welcome to use that. Um, so this is a plot of, the, uh, gem uh, solver compute time. So just looking at their elliptic solver from their semi-implicit semi-Lagrangian scheme and the red curve is uh, the solver with this new GM res and it outscales their direct solver and they're quite pleased with that actually. Um, I think it was somewhat unexpected. So it's up to 60, over 6,000 MPI ranks on, uh, I think it's a relatively new Cray XC60. Eileen might divulge what the machine actually is. So, uh, and then uh, another plot is, com they're comparing different variants of the solver. So they have 2D and 3D. Um, as many of you know, you can formulate a semi-implicit scheme either in a stacked 2D or as a 3D and with uh, fully coupled. And then in, uh, with non-hydrostatic models, it's even more of a hassle. I'm not sure you really can do a full decoupling. But all that to say that the, um, the, the red curve there continues to scale and beats the FFT-based uh, solver, which, uh, which everyone is pleased about because so now Environment Canada will go into production with an iterative solver and they can uh, also do this in the limited area models as well. Uh, this is also on a yin-yang or so-called baseball grid uh, with an overlap, overlapping Schwartz uh, type solver. So they combine GM res with overlapping Schwartz. And again, uh, people in the audience certainly would be aware of this and a lot of work at CU Boulder in particular on overlapping Schwartz and elsewhere. Uh, some of the work was done in collaboration with Martin Gander in Geneva who uh, was in Montreal for a time. Okay, well, I'll pretty much stop there. That, I think we're kind of at the end. I want to leave time for questions. Um, our goal, uh, in particular with working with uh, Akasha, we'd like to see if we can build a uh, Tensor Core FP16 version of this. Uh, we are very memory bound in sparse iterative solvers. So it's unclear that we can really effectively do that, but we know that NVIDIA has provided a DGEM or a GEM, pardon me, in um, in Kusparz Kublaz for TensorCore. So let's see if we can't make good use of that. 
uh, we'd like to do further testing and again make this available to the community. Our, our particular application is incompressible Navier Stokes, but you know, we can apply this in optimization and in all kinds of different areas. Um, certainly, we think this applies to uh, AI ML framework, stochastic gradient descent, anywhere where you need to compute a lot of inner products. Uh, but of course, the backward stability issues and just numerical sensitivity can come into play here. And Aaron has done a tremendous amount of work. I, I really want to point out Aaron's work on conjugate gradients. She has a new result, which will be made available shortly uh, to everyone on how conjugate gradients convergence can be slowed by doing inner products in single precision. So she, she should make that available quite shortly to the community. And I'll stop there and turn it over for questions. And thanks again. I guess I should unshare my screen, I guess. So. There we go. So the typical question, oh, the, the question is, what are typical subspace sizes that we use in practice? Well, excellent question. I, I would say, I mean, in Nalo Win, which is an incompressible Navier-Stokes code, the pressure solver would be on the order of 20 to 30 uh, subspace dimension. Uh, and that's using a, an algebraic multi-grid preconditioner. Uh, pressure problems tend to be quite difficult. The momentum problem is uh, quite small, uh, five or six. However, and this, this is something Kasha, and, well, Kasha in particular observed that to get the most out of the GPU, you'd like to actually use a very large restart or a large Krylov subspace dimension. And therefore, it might be better to back off on, your pre, on the preconditioner and, use a, and, and delay convergence in a sense because you're getting more out of the GPU. You're filling it up and getting more performance. And in fact, the time to solution might be uh, faster. So, okay. so next question, did I get it right that the mixed precision converges to double precision accuracy? And what's, um, oh, how to compare that with, let me just move my screen around a bit here, uh, sorry. Uh, and what's the number of iterations compared to full double precision? Well, so the answer to the first question is yes we achieve full double precision accuracy, the same as the um, non-mixed algorithm would achieve. And in fact, the problem I ran, uh, you could have, uh, well, I was comparing directly with what I presented last year. And so the number of iterations for GMRAs is the same. It's identical. And this is where Aaron's results for conjugate gradient are interesting in that it does not hold for Lancho's conjugate gradients. But for GMRES, the number of iterations is the same. And that, that's a great question. Thank you. It, uh, it's important to point that out. Yeah. 